Hello again. I had a great time traveling all around Europe over the past three months, but now I'm back in California and I'm just about ready to give you a full overview of everything Neo in Europe, but not today. What I'm working on is a few in-depth videos that you won't see anywhere else, including a comprehensive review of the ET7, an in-depth review of the European app and how it compares to the Neo app in China, as well as a honest uh, discussion about Neo in Europe and my experience with them. A while back, I did mention that I want to keep my YouTube subscribers higher than Neo's monthly deliveries in China. And well, I've fallen behind in December. So again, make sure you subscribe so that I can hopefully pass them on by. In today's video, we are going to take a closer look at the various cameras in the Neo ET7. This is the first and currently only NT 2.0 platform vehicle that Neo has released in Europe. Very soon, of course, they will come out with the EL7 and the ET5 which are also on the same 2.0 platform. But for now, all we've got is the ET7, so that's what we're gonna take a look at. I did try to find the specs of the ET5 cameras and the EL7 cameras, and I couldn't find them online. So if you do know if there's any difference at all, please comment below. Um, but from my understanding is they should all be the same. So let's get started. In my opinion, the second generation platform cars are for the most part, a huge step up from the previous gen platform, Neos. The cameras are no exception. In fact, the cameras, they might be the biggest step up in terms of improvement that I could find during my time with the ET7. This footage on screen right now is footage from the dash cam of my Neo EC6 in China, which as you can see, is absolutely terrible. The resolution of that camera was 1280 by 800, which means it is barely usable for anything other than proving who was at fault in a frontal collision. The ET7 on the other hand has a main dash cam that is much more than usable, not just for determining fault in an accident, but also for saving footage from your road trips in Europe and then posting them to YouTube while reviewing the quality of the dash cams. The resolution on the main dash cam is a bit weird at 3840 by 1696, but cropping the footage to something more traditional and then doing a bit of color correction, you start to get video that is both versatile and, and gorgeous. When you save the footage, you also get synchronized access to four other cameras, those being the front bumper, the rear, the left, and the right. The resolution on these cameras isn't as good, obviously. These aren't the main cameras, but you do have total coverage, which gives you a 360 degree record of any incident that may have occurred. In comparison to the NT 1.0 platform vehicles, you can see the massive improvement any which way you look at it. But now you also have the ability to toggle on driving information watermark. You can see the speed that the vehicle is traveling as well as your current actions like braking, accelerating and more. This watermark appears on all cameras when you toggle it on, further protecting you in the event of an accident. Besides the better resolution, you can also clearly see improved colors, better dynamic range and contrast, as well as better image quality at night. I actually don't have any safe footage from my EC6 dash cam, aside from this one clip that I've shown a couple of times now, simply because that footage was so terrible, I junked it long ago. In fact, it was so bad, I used NeoPoints to buy a third party camera that was available in the Neo app store in China. The camera that I bought was the DDPi camera, which had 4K resolution, 
and it was a massive improvement over the EC6 dash cam, of course, but the DDPi app was a little bit janky, and using that camera meant I had to mount it to the windshield and then run a cord around the interior of the car to keep it plugged in and powered on. The massive improvement in the NT 2.0 cameras means that if you are a person like me that wants to save your dash cam footage, you'll save yourself the hassle of installing third-party cameras in the car, as well as additional apps on your mobile phone, and you will save your dollars or your Neo points for something better in the Neo Life store. All in all, this is a tremendous improvement, in my opinion, from the previous generation vehicles. The only complaint I have, which I don't know if Neil can actually do anything about this, but when you do save the files, it outputs it to a .ts file. This means that when you put it on your computer, you do have to convert it to a more useful file if you wanna actually view it. Um, you can view .ts files in VLC Media Player, but if you wanna use QuickTime or Final Cut Pro like I'm doing today to edit this video, I need to convert it using a web-based app um, like Cloud Converter or some other website. Now there's one other camera that we need to check out and that is the interior selfie camera. I failed to find the specs on the two cameras so I don't know if the aperture has gotten wider or anything like that but the resolution in the NT 2.0 platform selfie camera has seen uh, I would say marginal improvements. I would personally like to see a major improvement there in the next gen vehicles Otherwise, the selfie camera will remain a seldom used gimmick, more than anything actually functional or usable outside the vehicle. So that's that. Tell me what you think about the improved cameras in the Neo NT 2.0 platform vehicles or anything else you'd like to talk about, just put it in the comments. Um, if you need life advice, I'm here, hit me up. Whatever, whatever you want, the world's your oyster. So um, thank you, of course, everybody for watching once again. And uh, I'll see you next time, hopefully soon. So make sure you subscribe. And if you do buy a Neo or subscribe to a Neo in Europe or in China, scan my QR codes or use my, my link. Thank you. Bye bye. Peace out. Thank you.